right. Limits and continuity. So first off, we have a limit of a function of two variables. Do not worry about this definition. What this is saying is if we can get sufficiently close to the point A, B in the X, Y plane, then we can get sufficiently close to a point on our surface. That's, that's really all it's saying. It's the same limit that concept that you talked about in single variable calculus. It's just now our input is in the X, Y plane and our output is on the surface, which is floating above or uh, below the X, Y plane, depending on our surface. This leads to the definition of continuity. A function is continuous. This is the same definition as calc one, except now we have ordered pair for an input. If the limit is equal to the function value at any given point, all right? So two things necessary for continuity. One, the limit must exist at a point. Two, the output, what that limit is, must be equal to the function value at that point. Now we're not gonna go around checking every single point for continuity. What we're gonna do is try and identify points that might not be continuous to see what's going on. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of doing these limits. And this is just to kind of bring home what you saw in the video. So, Number one, okay, so first thing I want to mention, and I'm just not doing an example for time's sake. Anytime you're doing a limit at a point, the first thing you do is plug in your inputs, okay? So for, for this one, I'm doing the limit as x, y goes to 0, 0 of 3x, y over x squared plus y squared. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug zero in for X and zero in for Y and see what happens. Yeah. In this particular case, we're going to get zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form. It means we have more work to do. But if you don't, if you get a number, you're done. That's your answer. If you get zero over a number, you're done. Your answer is zero. If you get a number over zero, you're done. Your answer is undefined, okay? So first step on any limit at a point is to plug it in, see what happens. It's only the zero over zero case or the indeterminate form is where we have to do more work. Yep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna both look at this. We're gonna look at this graphically and then we're gonna look at it algebraically. So, no, it's uh, because we're looking for continuity, we're only looking specifically at points. Okay, so what we would do is put this in as a graph because we want to see what's going on. 3xy divided by x squared plus y squared. There it is right there. I just got to get rid of the negative. Okay. Now, remember, we are specifically looking for what is going on at zero, zero. Look at what's going on at the origin of our graph, right? There's this big dip right here. And if I turn it around this way, you see it as well. There's not a nice smooth uh, path going on at zero, zero. So right off the bat, we're already thinking, okay, there's a good chance this limit is not going to exist because regardless of path, it should end up at the same place. So what we'll do is we'll check a couple paths. So maybe we first check the path y equals x. Basically what this will do is turn this into a single variable problem because all the y's are gonna become x's. So what will that look like? Well, limit as x goes to zero, three times x times x, so three x squared on top over x squared plus x squared on bottom. 
right? So basically we're just changing the, the uh, y's for an x. So we get three x squared over two x squared. Those cancel, this comes out to be three halves, okay? Well, that's all well and good. We need to make sure that if we choose another path, we get to this, we get the same result. If we choose any other path um, and don't get the same result, then we're already done. Now, there's no, uh, in the video, they give you some basic ones to choose y equals zero, x equals zero, y equals x, y equals negative x, y equals x squared, y equals negative x squared. Those are some of our standard ones. Um, since I chose y equals x for the first one, I'm going to choose, choose excuse me, y equals negative x for the second. Now this is still limit as basically x goes to zero. And most of it's gonna come out the same. Here's where the difference is gonna come. When I put a, x, a negative x in for this y, that's gonna give me a minus three x squared here. But a negative x here, because it's being squared, becomes still a positive x squared. So minus, I guess I haven't really taken the limit yet. That should have been in there. Limit as x goes to zero till we take it. Um, minus three x squared over two x squared. Those cancel. But this time we get minus three halves. We're done. This tells us this limit does not exist. We need to be able to get to the same value regardless of what path we, we choose. Okay, so that's what the that's what the video was trying to show is you choose a couple paths and they don't come out the same, you're already done. Now, what I'm wanting to add into it is taking a look at the graph, to already have an idea of what you want to choose. Questions about that one? All right, let's look at one more and then we'll work on some problems. So limit as zero, zero. I had it on the slide, but I just want to leave Calc plot 3D up. What did I have? Where did it go? X squared Y. over x squared plus 10 y squared, okay? Once again, let's take a look at what we got going on. And what we're looking for, remember we're looking at zero, zero. Notice on this graph at zero, zero, it's a lot smoother, right? That's the kind of behavior we expect to see when the limit is going to exist, all right? Now, this function value does not exist as zero, zero because it, it makes a zero in the denominator. So this thing is not gonna be continuous at zero, zero, but that doesn't mean the limit won't exist. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start checking some paths. So maybe we check, a basic one first, how about y equals zero? So limit as, like I said, it makes it a calc one from x goes to zero. If we zero out the y's, we basically end up with zero on top over x squared, which is zero. Okay. What about x equals zero? Well, now we're doing it for y, so limit as y goes to zero, making x zero, still zeros out the numerator. Just need to make sure it doesn't zero. So over 10 y squared, it's gonna be zero. Let's check out the path y equals x. y equals x and y equals negative x caused, caused the issue on the last one, right? So, if it's y equals x, we got the limit 
as x goes to zero, putting in x there, that's going to be an x cubed over x squared plus 10x squared. So we have the limit as x goes to zero of x cubed over 11x squared. Well, we can cancel two, an x squared out of top and bottom. Now we can do it via direct substitution. Plug it in zero gives us zero. So we're starting to notice a pattern, right? Now we're not gonna cover every possible path. That's why we look at the graph. Let's just do one more. And only because this is the one that caused us problems before. Now you don't need to do 15 different paths every time you do one of these. That's why we're leveraging the, uh, the graph. Yeah. So now when I plug in a negative X for Y, I'm gonna get negative X cubed over X squared plus 10 X squared. So limit as X goes to zero, of negative X cubed over 11 X squared, basically the same cancel. And the negative doesn't affect the fact that this thing is still going to be zero. So in all four cases, we're getting that that limit is zero. And we can also confirm that graphically. We look, if we look from the side, see how it's pretty much meeting at the origin there. So checking a handful, two or three paths to make sure you get the same thing that goes along with what you're seeing graphically is enough to show these things, um, the limits exist. That's it for 13.2. Uh, 